if we had achieved the greatest degree of privacy one can manage in an open compound containing thousands of weak, weary, dispirited prisoners and a goodly number of sharp-eyed Japanese guards, I mentioned the thing closest to my heart. Steve. Huh? Have we a chance of escaping? Escaping? Oh, maybe, Mac. I don't know. It can't be done, I suppose. What's the matter with you, man? Huh? Oh, nothing. I don't know. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, look. What's the matter? Watch hey, this. Hey, hey. Against the wall. American, stand at the wall. According to the laws of this camp, this sentence is carried out. Two of your squad of ten have escaped. The other eight must die. Do you wish to be blindfolded? Or do you have the courage to face the firing squad? You got no right to do this to us. Quiet! I won't. I tell you, those two men did not escape. They were too sick to try it. Quiet! Ichi! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! How dare you interrupt an action of the Imperial Japanese uh, Army? Who we found them. The two men you said escaped. They were so weak, they fell into the latrine ditch. Where are they? Bring them here at once. I can't. They're dead. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Melnick. I shall never forget a little vignette that met my eyes every day at Kabanatuan, and again at another camp to which McCoy and I were later transferred, the one at Davao. Picture a man walking around a compound enclosed in barbed wire. He massages his fingers constantly as he walks and stops now and then to massage his toes. A Jap guard follows him with his eyes, a smile on his face. The man is suffering from beriberi and may be scurvy as well. The pain in his joints and extremities is excruciating. Medicine is what he needs, but a balanced diet would help enormously. Fresh fruits and green stuffs would do the trick. And out there in front of his eyes, green stuffs and berries grow in abundance. But the barbed wire stands between. And the Jap guard stands and fondles his Tommy gun with a smile set thinly on his face. The Jap guards don't need those berries and green stuffs, but the prisoner can't have them. You look at the poor devil's eyes as he passes you. You notice again the smile of the Jap guard, and you reflect that certain parts of the Orient have developed rare refinements of cruelty. Commander McCoy. Not long after my arrival at Cabana Tawan, I walked one evening in the compound with Melnick. Poor wretches squatted everywhere within my sight. Their starved bodies slumped over. Suddenly, I, I saw a familiar face. Say, Steve, hmm? isn't that gun over there? The chap sitting with that small group by the fence? I, yes, that's gun. Well, how long has he been here? He got here a few days before you did. He did? But why didn't you tell me he was here? You know we're friends. Yes, I know, but you were so weak yourself when you arrived. I, <laughs> I thought you ought to rest up a bit before meeting him. didn't want me to see gun till I felt up to it. I looked down at this friend of mine, this man I had known for years, and I felt ill. It was as though someone had thrown acid in his face, searing it, discoloring it, taking all the life out of it. The same was true of the other men with him. I looked at gun fascinated. I could only stammer, you... You look awful. Why not? I was on the ten. I made the death march. 
I was afraid to ask him about it. I sat down. Steve sat down. I tried to collect my thoughts and stared straight ahead towards one of the barracks. Good God! Huh? Oh. Oh, you'll, you'll get used to that. I had already become aware of the awful stench about the camp, but for the first time I noticed that outside of each barracks there was a neat row of bodies. Somehow I knew the bodies had been there for some time. Clouds of flies arose from them when groups of prisoners walked nearby. Yeah, Mac, you'll get used to that. But but why don't they bury them? They? You hear Japs? Well, then, why don't you bury them? Gosh, Mac. <laughs> you must have had a soft time of it till now. You don't know the Japs. They should bury them. They should let us bury them before the sight is seared and desecrated our souls. <laughs> I tell you, you don't know the Japs, Mac. Why, before we came here, we we spent some time at another hellhole, Camp O'Donnell. At least 2,200 men died there in two months that I know of. The Japs wouldn't bury them. The Americans and Filipinos were so weak, there weren't enough healthy men to dig the graves. As a result, the camp became so littered with bodies that you could hardly tell the living from the dead. With all of that, all the running water around the camp became polluted, which made more sick, more dead. Good God! Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can gasp. There are thousands of American witnesses to tell the truth of what I'm telling you. <laughs> once, once we decided to stand in our rights as prisoners of war, we insisted on seeing the camp commander and complaining to him. I can hear the little bullfinch now, sticking out his mangy little chest and shouting, I tell you this to your face, swine. I do not like Americans. And I do not care how many die, nor how they die. No, Mac. You don't know the Japs. You don't know them. The dirty, stinking little. But I know them, Mac. These fellas here with me know them. We made the death march from Bataan. And then Gunn told us about the death march. took 10,000 Americans and 45,000 Filipinos prisoners. They marched to San Fernando, Papanga, a distance of 120 miles. 120 miles. We were marched in different groups. We went without water for days at a time. We went without food for most of the time. I personally didn't have a bite for days. I, I don't know how many days I lost count. But I know it was over a week. And then, and then they gave me a mess, kid of rice. <laughs> oh, we often pass running streams. But the Japs seldom allowed us to drink. A few prisoners tried it. Mostly Filipinos. They were shot down, cold blood. Oh, yeah, the Japs didn't mind when we drank from muddy carabao wallows, though. No, no, they like to see us do that. That's where we got all the dysentery, I suppose. At the end of every day, Mac, the Japs dispatched those of us who looked too weak to make the march the following day. But they committed murder with a new twist. They made the condemned dig their own graves. And brother, no matter how sick or wounded or near the dying you are, when a Jap with a sharp bayonet tells you to dig your own grave, <laughs> you dig. How you dig? A Jap... Shut up, gun! Shut up! By 
Tad started. It was one of the kids who had made the death march with gun. Gun passed him off casually, but without smiling. Gun will never smile again. Johnny doesn't like to think about it, gentlemen. But I can assure you on eyewitness testimony that a Jap with a helpless man in one hand and a brain at me, and there is a supreme artist. Just as if you didn't know. I'll kill him. I'll kill every last one of them. The dirty white liver. Sit down, sit down. Quiet, Travis. Quiet, 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 Johnny. Quiet, boy. Do you want him to hear you? (laughs) Oh, no. Try to forget it, son. Try to forget it. I can't forget it, Commander. I can't. Shh, boy. Then get it out of your system. Talk about it. And that's what he chose to do. It happened a lot of times. But the first time it happened, I didn't know what was up. The prisoner had keeled over. He'd been stumbling for hours. The Japs dragged him out of the line to a ditch by the side of the road. And they took me out of line. They took me to where the poor guy was lying in the ditch. One of the Japs handed me a shovel. Another jabbed a bayonet in me and shouted an order in Japanese. I didn't know what they wanted. Then a Jap grabbed the shovel out of my hand and showed me. He threw a few shovels full of earth on the unconscious soldier. Then he handed me the shovel. Dear God, it doesn't help to tell myself that he was more dead than alive. (laughs) The worst time was once when a poor guy with six inches of dirt over him suddenly regained consciousness and tried to sit up. He clawed away at the dirt, trying to save himself. Then the jab bayonet struck me. There are some stories which it is better not to finish. You're right, Mac. There are stories which it's better not to finish at least not through a medium which is welcomed into the homes of a people raised in the principles of Christian charity. But don't think, America, that such stories as you've just heard are the outstanding examples of Japanese atrociousness. As a matter of fact, they are the least shocking of the hundreds we have caused to be printed or could tell. And the 513 men who were rescued from Cabanatawan the other night by the rangers will undoubtedly have fresh horrors to add to the list. Unless the Japs have changed. But if your imagination fails you, think of the doings of the Nazis in the ghettos of Poland. Cast your minds back to the unholy times when tyrants impale the heads of those who displeased them and on the gateposts of their castles dwell upon the gentler arts and forms once practiced in the Inquisition torture chambers. Imagine the starvation of Athens, the filth and hopelessness of Devil's Island. Add all these up. You'll have a good picture of the Japanese treatment of American military prisoners in the Philippines. We were there. We know. Tonight inspired by the rescue last week by American Rangers of the last 513 prisoners of war in the notorious Cabanatuan prison camp, Words at War has brought you dramatic excerpts from the book Ten Escape from Tojo by Lieutenant Welburn Kelly. The radio script was prepared by Richard McDonough and featured Kenneth Danew as Commander McCoy, Ted Jewett as Lieutenant Colonel Melnick, and Ned Weaver as Gunn. The music was by William Meader, and the entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leder. Next week, we'll present the controversial book, What to Do with Germany, by Louis Neiser. 
Words at War is brought to you in cooperation with the Council on Books and Wartime by the National Broadcasting Company and the independent stations affiliated with the NBC network. Jack Costello speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company.